Yes, no, maybe. Okay. Welcome. I'd like to welcome everyone here in the audience and everyone at home to our uh, public informational forum on the recycling program and I would also like to say on our trust enforcement and, and a number of other concerns that were brought to our attention. We welcome you here. This is an informational forum. This is not a council meeting. This is not a hearing. It's a chance to of concerns and questions and uh, we have a number of representatives here with us this evening um, from the various entities that oversee and uh, we'll introduce we'll have everyone introduce themselves and uh, and then we'll have a small presentation um, by the town manager in regard to the program and and then we will go from there we'll go with some uh, questions and there are questions we all have too, so if we don't get them from you, we'll certainly um, throw some out there. This is informational, as I said, and when it's finished, hopefully there, there may be ideas, thoughts that'll come from this that potentially will go uh, back to subcommittee, and, uh, and then we can address those too. But for tonight, it's really about getting the information out to you, the public. And on that note, uh, we'll move on. So let's start at the right-hand side of the uh, dais, if possible, and if you could just introduce yourself and um, let us from Casella Recycling out of Charlestown and Auburn. I'm Jerry Gleaner. I'm the division manager for the hauling company. Uh, John Faris, uh, I'm in charge of the landfill. Shane Woodson, uh, lieutenant with Southbridge PD. Denise Clements, vice chair of the council. Christopher Clark, town manager. Conrad Vandal, town councilor. Larry Spinelli, town councilor. I'll turn it over to our town manager who has, who has a report from the uh, Board of Health and, and other information to share with everybody. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, I do want to make a, a couple of observations before we start. Uh, the presentation is probably about 15 minutes. I will try to keep it as, as concise as I can. It is going to be up on the screen behind you. Uh, this is school vacation week, so there are some of the staff for the, uh, the health department that are away on vacation. But there are representatives of the health department here. Uh, Bob Chininsky is in Tchaikovsky. <laughs> yeah, I've done that like twice now this week. I'm sorry, Bob. Bob Tchaikovsky is uh, the chairman of the Board of Health, is in the front row, so he'll be listening to some of the comments. Uh, Anna Smith behind him is the uh, recycling, uh, the landfill monitor. And then Maritza uh, Porta Latin is the, uh, the record keeper and one that helped to uh, administer the program. Uh, this was a coordinated effort between administration and the Board of Health uh, to make sure that we had a program that was designed to meet the needs of the town council. Uh, and just a, a by, by way of quick background, uh, the original presentation that administration and the Board of Health made to the town council was for a smart cart program. Uh, the smart cart program was not voted successfully, and the council tasked administration and the health department to come back with a revised program and the revised program is what we have implemented after discussions with the town council and what is on the screen behind you it's really a education slash enforcement uh, effort and this is the enforcement of a bylaw that's been on the books for well over 20 years uh, so the bylaw has not been amended has not been changed and simply we are we are trying to make sure people are aware of what the bylaw is and what I'd like to do is now I'll, I'll just go through the slides. I did pass out several of the slides to folks in the audience, so you do have that. <clears throat> the first thing that we wanted to make sure that we were uh, able to accomplish is that we wanted to uh, make sure that people were aware. So the program of the education side began in earnest, really on October 17th, 2011. <clears throat> and how we did that is through uh, advertising. Uh, we have several components to how we accomplish this, but one, one of the components was advertising. We paid um, for uh, Telegram and Gazette, a quarter page ad for four weeks, running every other week. The Southbridge Evening News, we had a quarter page ad for 10 weeks, and that was running weekly. All the funding for this program, too, was funded by uh, the revenue proceeds that we received from Casella. So this was something that the program was designed to improve the recycling rate in the community. And this was money that had previously been funded, uh, had been funding the Recycle Bank program that had not been effective in increasing recycling efforts in the community. 
So we have on the, do we have the slides? You have the wrong version. <clears throat> well, what we'll do is, I, I think I have enough for the handout so people have them. Uh, so on that first page, you see the advertising. What we did also was to show a, an example of what that advertising um, actually emphasized. There are sections of this bylaw that uh, emphasize what needs to be done by the residents, and we are only enforcing uh, certain components of that. So we have not been, in my opinion, onerous in that we have not enforced the clear plastic bag uh, issue. What we have focused our enforcement efforts on, which is really a concept to beautify the community, is to make sure people put the trash bags in barrels and then cover the barrels to make sure that rodents or animals cannot get into the barrels. So on the advertising, a lot of the advertising has very specific of making sure that uh, people put the clear plastic bags into the trash containers, that they place the durable, rodent-proof, watertight trash containers at the curb by 7 a.m. on collection day, and that the covered, the covered container with light, with tight-fitting cover um, and attached cover is recommended. That is right out of the bylaw, so we have not been creative. We have simply enforced what is on the books and has been on the books for literally uh, decades. We also did a, a tri-fold brochure uh, that we have made available in various public locations to make sure that people, if you didn't necessarily, if you don't subscribe to the newspaper, we made the tri-fold brochures available in different sections in the community, in town hall, uh, I believe we had some at the library and other areas. <laughs> When we, we have uh, one of the components of this program is we have a uh, person that was hired called Green Brown Consulting. And Green Brown Consulting, one of their primary responsibilities was to enhance education. On the enhanced education, they put together a uh, educational door hanger. So if you had your trash bags out basically from October until February, from October to February for that three month period, you would get an educational door hanger saying, look, you're not complying with the bylaws, please make sure that you comply. And then up on the slide and in your handouts is a, uh, a copy of what that uh, door hanger looks like. Again, a lot of this duplicates what is out there. In terms of if you also, uh, during that education period, uh, we also had uh, green stickers that would be adhered to a bag. So if people had bags out from October until February, if you had a bag out and you weren't complying, you most likely got a green sticker. Uh, and all this material, or most of the material, has been not only in English, but in Spanish as well. Uh, a good portion of the population is, is Hispanic speaking, so we have um, both versions of this to be able to distribute to folks. Then we wanted to make sure that you know everybody would have an opportunity to make sure that they were definitely aware of this. So the one other measure that we took was that we sent out 3,800 postcards. There's about 6,000 households in the community that have trash pickup in the community, 6,000 households. And the reason why it's only 3,800 is that there are several people that own multiple properties. So instead of sending a mailer to that same property owner that, owes, that owns five or six uh, units, we just sent one. So the reason why that 3,800 is really for that, for that reason. So whether you own a property, whether you operate in town or whether you're a tenant that put the bags out and weren't aware of it, hopefully that we, during that three month period, had an opportunity to provide the education piece to say that we are coming, we are gonna enforce these bylaws and we are gonna complete the, the mission at hand. On the, the next slide, the police officers started to get more involved in the process and they have uh, the opportunity to issue a warning. So now we have even an additional layer that for folks that had bags out that are not, not in compliance, that they had the opportunity to provide a warning to the person so that they, way they could bring themselves into compliance. And again, in both English and in Spanish. 
Now, one of the primary reasons for, for in t undertaking this endeavor was to improve the recycling rate. And we've been trying uh, for the time that I've been here for approximately four years to improve the recycling rate. There was a program that was Recycle Bank. Recycle Bank had very uh, limited positive results. The recycling rate stayed at about 16 to 18 percent and never really moved that significantly. So one of the things that we wanted to do in this program was when the education component was done and we got into the enforcement, we wanted to make sure that we examined and see what is happening with that rate. So we have the slide that you have in front of you is the MSW. MSW stands for Municipal Solid Waste and Recycling Tonnages. And we went on a, a period of time on municipal solid waste, so trash, trash, that there was a high of 104 uh, tons, and that went down to a low of 64 uh, tons. And that is a 66% reduction. So the amount of trash that's generated has come down. And what we did was we tracked information from October uh, through April, and tickets actually didn't get, didn't initiate until February. So we literally went three solid months of straight education to let people know before we got to the, to the ticket cycle. Just in terms of, um, just in a, a little different format, uh, this lays it out that in the six months in which we wanted to, we have uh, February, and we just took month to month. So February of 2011, the, uh, the recycling rate was 16.44%. February 2012, well into this program, the recycling rate went up to 25.45%. So almost a 10% increase in the recycling rate. In March 2011, we were at 18.5. In March 2012, went to 26.7. So again, significant increases, and after three or four years of Recycle Bank not moving the needle, this program has accomplished what the council wanted us to accomplish, and that is to move, the, to move these numbers in a positive direction for the community. The other piece to that, the flip side of that, is on the uh, municipal solid waste tonnages. And you can see, uh, again, this is our landfill, it's the community's landfill, and these are tonnages that go up to, to the landfill. That in March 2011, it was 480 tons for that month, and then March 2012 was 335. So more than a, uh, more than a 100, 100 uh, ton drop. And then in uh, February 2011 to February 2012, we went from 345 to 309. So this program is having the desired effect of, of helping us to reduce the amount of municipal solid waste. In terms of the enforcement overview, what we're, uh, what we're doing is we, we hired a uh, consulting firm by the name of Green Brown to conduct many of these uh, activities. They would do daily route checks. So they would actually go around, follow the Casella trucks as they're doing their pickups to see how that was going. They would issue the educational pamphlets, some of which I've already uh, shown, the pamphlets, the door tags, and the green stickers. He would actually get out, of the, get out of his vehicle and talk to the property owner and the tenants to try to educate them during this three-month period. If, if the person wasn't home, we would send letters uh, notice, letting them know about enforcement efforts coming up. So we sent letters to individuals as well. Uh, he would also, if people called in about complaints or reports of illegal dumping, then he would also follow up on those. And one of the things that was interesting that, that has had some real success for us is he would verify residents uh, for recycling tota program. There's a fair amount of people that were on the program in the, in the Casella pickup that weren't eligible for it. And the Green Brown consultant was actually trying to identify those people and make sure that they were not on there. Uh, quite frankly, they were getting a benefit that, they, that was never anticipated in the contract. In terms of the enforcement items, there are a, a numerous amount of items that have been, that we could enforce for, and yet the, our real primary focus has been narrowed down to four areas. 
the, the big one, uh, number one for most of the citations that were issued was no trash containers, people leaving loose bags on the, uh, on the curb. Uh, also, the no tight-fitting cover on the trash container was a secondary. If trash spilled, that was also a secondary. And if there was people that obviously took the recycling material and instead of using the recycling bin for recycling, used it for trash, then that was actually a violation of our recycling, mandatory recycling bylaw. So we were trying to get people to, to comply that a recycling bin is exactly that, a recycling bin. A trash bin is, is, is a trash bin. In terms of um, on some of the additional, this is again Green Brown, uh, he issued 500 uh, plus or minus door tags, 135 green tags, almost 450 letters sent out, 160 interactions with property owners, uh, and 90 tenants were, uh, were talked to. As I indicated that we did follow up with an enforcement letter, so after somebody went to the house, there was the, uh, the enforcement letter that they got afterwards, so that way they would have a piece of paper as a, as a follow-up item. In this one, I think the next slide is a uh, interesting one on the enforcement incidences. We had 2,158 enforcement incidences, and I think this one is, is most relevant, that on the total loose bags at the curb from October to February, there was 1,433. On loose bags at the curb per day in October to February, this was the education period, the education period only, he observed at least 30 to 50 bags out there, uh, 30 to 50 locations where there were bags. When the enforcement effort began, in which the police department commenced the enforcement efforts in February, since February, and really in, in the April calculation here, we're down to five to 15. So in a real way, the community is cleaner because not as many people are, uh, are well, more people are complying with the system. On the uh, education budget, again, this was money that came out of the, uh, the revenue that the town receives from uh, Casella uh, for recycling efforts, and we put forward uh, $14,000 was what we allocated in the budget. We spent uh, $12,000 in the effort. We actually also, one of the other things that I don't think I put on the slide, but we did have uh, several informational videos that were on our various channels. And those videos were done uh, by, uh, by an outside firm, and they were done in English and in Spanish. So if you had cable in the community and you watch some of the local channels, you had an opportunity to see some of the uh, educational. So we, we utilized the money as we had indicated to the council we would to commence education efforts. In terms of just uh, the budget, we have um, $22,000 of that budget had been allocated for the police department uh, to date. Uh, they have spent $12,000 on enforcement efforts. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the police resources and, and what we've been doing and, and what we intend on doing in the future. And then the other is on green-brown consulting. We anticipate that the green-brown people will be on board for a year. So we've expended 13,000 out of that uh, 36,000 uh, budget. And just really to, to recap some of the, uh, the real significance of this is that I think the council tasked administration, I think the Board of Health tasked their group to go out and improve the recycling in the community. And in the six month program, we have moved I like to say move the needle from the 16 to 18 percent up into the 25 to 26 percent. So we have, uh, in a definitive way, actually done what the policymakers of the community uh, directed us to do and, and move the needle. And on the MSW tonnages, we have dropped the amount of people, of amount of tonnages that are going into the landfill, and again, in a real and concrete way. In terms of compliance, and certainly I've, I've fielded a few calls myself, I've had people come in, and on the compliance, there are 6,000 6, homes that are eligible for this program, 6,000. To date, I, I checked down at the uh, town clerk's office, and there was about 280 fines issued. 
Now, some of those 280 fines are multiple fines, so there are a few of those are duplicate properties. But if you take those numbers, we're looking at about 5% of the population that hasn't responded to the education effort. And the flip side of that is 95%, 95% of the community has complied. And I actually think in, in all the years of, of doing this business, I think that uh, this effort accomplished quite a bit. And to get 95% compliance rate, I think is a, a testament that uh, what was done on the education side uh, did have a, uh, the desired effect. Um, in terms of just one comment on the, uh, the, the trash police and, and the comment about trash and, and the enforcement efforts, uh, certainly the lieutenant's here to, to talk about some of the specifics, if there are specifics. But it was our intent to hire three police officers and to have those police officers start doing some of the work of other officers that would free up their time so we could do it during straight time, some of these enforcement efforts. We were not successful in recruiting three police officers. So we had three that we basically were in the process of hiring that washed out on us, for lack of a better term. So we, we were kind of um, restricted in what we could do in, in that regards. So a lot of the police effort that has been done was done on or has been done on overtime, but that was due more to a staffing issue that we were unable to uh, secure those three officers and have them in place in a timely enough fashion to free up time from other officers. But I think, Madam Chair, that's a, uh, an overview of kind of the effort, and I don't think we have shared that information with the council. This is the first time that members of the council have been able to see that this has had a uh, the impact that they sought, but I do think that um, we have taken a, a positive step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, at this point, what we're here for is questions and answers to some of some of uh, some of your questions, answers to some of your questions, hopefully. Um, and we invite people to come up and ask. We do remind you that it's it's a question and answer form, so we hope that we can provide you with what you're looking for. Um, it's not a hearing. The hearing officer isn't here. If you have a specific ticket issue and you have that ability to we talk about the process and what you need to do and how you, we can help you with that, um, but certainly we won't resolve a ticket or, or that type of thing here, but we certainly will answer your concerns as best we can. So um, we open it up to any questions either from counselors or from the audience too. Um, all you'd have to do is come on up and, and ask your questions or make your statements or um, give us what you think. Sure. Feel first come, first serve. <laughs> yep. Uh, right here at the podium with the microphone. We just ask, uh, I guess we'd ask a name and an address, or, or at this point, it isn't a formal uh, meeting, so certainly a name would be fine. What do you find if you're not comfortable with your address? Just, uh, if you could just make sure it's... Christine McCoo. Okay. You just turn it. Can you just turn the mic straight towards you, ma'am? Just give it a... There you go. Thanks. That's better. That's better for us? All right. Appreciate My name's that. Christine McCoo. There were 250 tickets that were um, sent out recently. How many of those 250 tickets people were given warnings? Of those 250 tickets most recently mm -hmm. sent out, how many of those people were given warnings? In, in terms of the warnings, I don't know if, uh, if the lieutenant has a specific number, but I think on one of the slides it was about 2,000, basically 2,000 warnings that went out. In terms of a specific address, um, what we've done, and again, we're not out to, we're out to get compliance. We're really not out, we really don't want to penalize people if we can help it. One of the things that we've done since is we are now keeping a database on everybody that got a warning letter or any of these things that I mentioned to see if we can identify those areas where they've got several letters. There's absolutely, I'm not going to sit here and say that we didn't make mistakes and that people that may have violated it once, we caught them. And that definitely is a possibility. And the police officers that are on the street, in order to make enforcement relevant, we had to make it simple so that way we gave people three months of education, enforcement, and warning that when someone then left a bag on the street, if the police officer saw it, then they issued, they issued the ticket. 
the police officers were given discretion, and they, get, they got discretion directly from myself, that if they thought it was warranted, they should issue a ticket. If they thought that it wasn't necessarily warranted, they could go up and just mention something to the, to the property owner if the property owner was available. So they, they were given some discretion in terms of how they could issue the tickets. They weren't mandated that any time you see it, you automatically have to give a ticket. But they were encouraged to, to go and, and to enforce the laws that, that we have on the books. I mean, that's one of our responsibilities. I just think, I, I mean, I just think it's, it's a pretty hefty fee mm -hmm. for a resident to have to pay if they're not given a fair warning. If I'm driving on the, the Massachusetts Turnpike, or a state road, or a city road, and I'm stopped for speeding, nine out of 10 times an officer's gonna give me a warning before he gives me a $100 ticket. Now, for instance, I was just stopped in December for 190 bucks. Um, that's less than the $250 fine that you guys are charging residents for garbage pickup. Mm -hmm. Sounds like um, a hefty business deal, but Without the warnings, I think that's pretty unfair. And I've talked to people in town that have gotten these fines, and they were not warned. Some of them were, you know, out of state, out of city owners of property, and then they have tenants, which makes it a little harder. Um, but no warning doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I don't think there's a resident in town that doesn't want their, their city streets to be neat and clean and to recycle in the economy that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a point. Okay. Um, I don't recall seeing any tags on, on the property that, that I helped manage in Southbridge, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is John Hanson. I own property at 164 Marcy Street. <clears throat> I've done business in this town a long time, and so is my grandfather, and so is my great-grandfather. You all know where the landfill is. That was my ancestor's farm. <clears throat> and you just suggested that it's a community landfill. It's more than a community landfill because when I leave my mother's house, I can clearly see the landfill mountain from Sturbridge, so it's more than just Southbridge's landfill. <clears throat> when I bought my property on Marcy Street, I took a risk. I take a risk with a bank. I take a risk as a landlord. I'm a good landlord. <clears throat> I have three adults living in my three family, which is each floor, one adult. There's no trash output. <clears throat> I'm, I'm very steamed up about this. Tick $250 fine. I own a transportation company. I don't even get fined from the Department of Transportation as big as a $250 fine for a bag of trash. <clears throat> the day before I had the hearing, I happened to be down at Big Y. I got some stuff from Aubuchon Hardware. I pulled up next to the river, and if you want to enforce something, and I'm not looking for an answer here, because I, I have no question, just a statement. Has McDonald's gotten enforced for all the debris in the river? <clears throat> Secondly, if this is supposed to be an education process, I would educate the hearing lady downstairs. I've run apartment buildings a long time. I know what goes on. I know how hard it is. I know tenants are tenants. It's babysitting. I've had three adults in my building for one year. There's no trash output. Half the time I take it to my dumpster. If your goal, <clears throat> if your goal with this is to reduce trash, you've done it because now I won't participate. Because the answer I got downstairs was, it's my choice. When I put the trash out, it's my responsibility. I said, I, I can't babysit my trash barrel. That's your choice. So when I leave for work and my trash is in a barrel, Southbridge has its share of can collectors or wandering people. I have a witness that witnessed the guy with a bicycle with a wagon taking my trash out of my barrel and setting it on the ground the day I got the ticket. I'm at work to support my building because I refuse to raise rents because I refuse to lose tenants. 
And just another thought. The trash consumption could have gone down because of empty buildings and all the torn down buildings, but I, I'm, not, I'm not one of those landlords to walk away. I'm not the broken spoke in the neighborhood. But when you're tearing down buildings on Mill Street, of course trash consumption is going to go down. I also think that it's bully tactics. It is bully tactics for my tenants struggling to heat. I got tenants eating one meal a day to pay their rent. Because when they move into my house, the rent comes first because I get a responsibility as a landlord and to, and to the bank not to lose my house, my tenants, and I keep a clean place. I got to work to help that building roll. <clears throat> Southbridge owns the landfill. They also own the water company. I pay water bills equal to paying diesel fuel for my trucks. <clears throat> 250 is a slap in the face. That's my water bill. For rents I refuse to raise because I've seen it in the paper, just pass the cost on to your tenants. I refuse to do it because you're not tearing my house down because I continue to make the payments. I continue to go there on a daily basis and I keep my house up. If you want to educate, get the police department or whoever's in charge to keep the people out, keep their paws out of my trash. I know how to manage a building. I was, with the pictures, I was told that, the, that the, my amount of trash can't fit in a container. It can, because I've done it. I've managed buildings since I've been 14. My, my family owned 38 buildings in this town at one time. None of them got foreclosed. None of them got tore down, and mine isn't. <clears throat> I'm stuck with my building, because we're in a mill town, and there's no selling it. It's a joke. You know, I owned it, I bought it in good faith, I like it, I plan on keeping it. I do not plan on paying this ticket, never. We own the landfill. I'm not babysitting my trash barrel to have some guy come over, take the trash out, leave it on the ground, so I gotta take a day. Your, your town employee told me it's my choice to go to work or my choice to sit next to the <coughs> trash barrel. So now I don't participate, so if your goal is, and I recycle. <clears throat> Six years ago, I entered the scrap business. I've done more recycling than probably you guys can ever do. I've bought equipment, I ran a successful business, and I've launched it into something else. But this is bully tactics. If you, if you want to educate, go clean the river down at McDonald's. But this is, I, I am disgusted by this. It's a waste of my time, and also, it's going to be a waste of Dudley District's court time when all these landlords show up because we're babysitting. Thank you. Okay. I want to thank you for your comments, and you've brought up some very important um, points and concerns that are concerning me, too, at this very second, one being the, the hearing officer and, and some of the compliance that she may or may not be doing there, and that we've talked about a little bit, and obviously without somebody like you telling us what your experience was, we can't correct a problem that I see, and we definitely have a problem. Um, in terms of one thing that I think, just having lived in this community too, is, is you know, we're, we're very lucky to have you to be able to be in this community and all. Keep in mind there are a couple of things. The enforcement is supposed to happen to the individuals. It says it in our bylaw that the tenants are responsible. Now I realize you're the owner and it's easy for us to come to you for specifically, but our bylaw does say that we enforce with the tenant. Your tenants are fortunate that they have a landlord who actually pro will provide the container, because that's what, if you have a uh, two family or above, you're supposed to provide a receptacle. It is your tenant's responsibility to do what they're supposed to do with that receptacle, and then it's our responsibility to enforce through the tenants. Now, sometimes that might be difficult, and you're going to, you know, they're going to say, oh, here's the address, you're responsible. But the reality is, and I certainly hope, it, well, I don't hope anymore, I want the compliance to be with the tenants, and we need to make every effort to make that happen. And I'm sure other councillors would feel the same way. It's the people's responsibility. But keep in mind, you say we have a landfill, and we do. We we'll use it. But someday that landfill is going to be closed and go away. And we are going to be like every other town that has to pay for our trash. Okay, so this is a, this is a huge perk that even, and as a business person, you understand, with, with multifamily homes, you're lucky if it's over six family, they're not, they don't have that same perk that 
one to six families do. So you actually have a benefit that's it's a free benefit right now that other communities don't have because they have to pay for their trash pickup. So you know it's kind of a it's a good it's a good thing for for many of our homeowners, but certainly for for those business people beyond six families, they still have to have their own dumpsters, their own. Um, you know, compliance, and someday we won't have that landfill, and we will probably all have to be paying for that. But I'm going to let the town manager answer some of the things I've said. But certainly, there's a there's a problem on the hearing side of things, and hopefully, we can get that. So, if you can give him a minute, well, and I'll let I, you talk. A couple of comments, um, and, and I appreciate some of your comments. I really do. Um, hopefully, I think in the time that I've been here, people know that I am an approachable person and a person that does try to to respond and understand. And I think also it's important that the town educate its residents in terms of um, we had a staff meeting, and at that staff meeting I said, why is it $250? I mean, that, that's a steep fine. I don't disagree at all with that. And what I was told is that several years, I mean, maybe even 20 years ago, there was a decision made in this community that they needed to have a fine structure that would change behavior. And what they found was that if you do a $25 or a $50 fine, people will just pay it and not really comply. And what they d determined, and again, this is the community, this is the rules and regulations that when I came here were already in place that I just have to enforce. And I was told that what the $250 fine would do would have the desired effect of changing behavior. And one example that was given to me by the, by the police chief is, I guess we had an abandoned car problem in the community. And when people started, when the community started to focus on the abandoned cars and, and started to fine people $250, now you're hard pressed to find an abandoned vehicle. So I think that the, the rationale that was explained to me was that the fine structure was such that it wanted to, to effectuate a change in behavior. Why are we doing this? You know, it's funny, you sit and say, you know, you own several properties. And, you know, there's a, a theory that's out there, uh, a guy by the name of Bill Bratton used to be the police chief in Boston. And Bill Bratton came up with the, uh, the concept, that he called it a broken window theory. And what the broken window theory is, is that once government lets things slide, lets a broken window on a nice neighborhood slide, then, the, then the, that neighborhood starts to slide. Now, Bill Bratton had that theory probably 20 years ago. And about two years ago, uh, I was either MIT or Harvard came out with a study. And they showed that when you have one house that is in derelict situation or doesn't keep itself up, that that can have a negative impact to the property owners in terms of real value on that property up to about a quarter of a mile away. So I, I understand what you're saying about us demolishing the, you know, trying to draw conclusions to the, uh, to the issue on Mill Street. And certainly the Mill Street is a perfect example of that MIT study in place that when you have a derelict property, it should be taken down. But the broken window theory applies also to, you know, trash that people leave out continuously and that that drives down the property value. And any good businessman, any good investor knows that if you put time and energy into a property and improve a property, then that asset will appreciate in value. So this effort is really for the 95% of the people that make the concerted effort to make sure that they keep their properties up so that we can keep this community looking better than I think it has been in, in the last four years. So, you know, I, I understand, but I think you need to, to hear too that you know, this isn't about making 250 bucks. This is about improving the community. It really is about improving the community. So, you know, you can take that, you know, you know, if you want to believe that or not believe that, that's certainly your right. But, you know, the intent of what I think the council charged us to do was to make sure that the community would, would look better. I don't know what, in terms of the allusion to the, to the landfill community, I, I recognize that you know, we, we house and host a, a landfill in the community and that it is a regional landfill. And if I said something to the contrary, I, I apologize that I, I misspoke. But I think that, you know, what we're attempting to do, and at least the administration folks and, and the professional staff, is to try to improve the community by making it look nice and to make sure that everyone benefits from this program. Go ahead. 
<clears throat> and do you have any questions specific to anybody here, too, if you want to ask about that's the enforcement? That's the first you point that's, that's coming up next. Okay. I realize collecting trash or recyclables is a difficult job. <clears throat> You're out in the weather. I've done it. I've, I've done it in this town for a company. Um, one of the things downstairs, I, I said, where's my cover? And I'm not pointing any fingers because the guy that does my street does a good job. The covers blow away. The response I got was that I should drill a hole and tie a rope to the covers so the covers don't blow away. So when that guy's doing his route, he's got a time schedule. He's throwing the trash in, throwing the trash in the truck or whatever he does and throws the barrels down, or he puts them upside down. Not a big deal, but, and I get it, if the, barrel, if the top is tied to the barrel, but it's another job for me, the landlord, to do, to tie, and I already got, I don't know how many Casella containers in my backyard. One I store rock salt in because I can't put it out. Um, the one for the smart cart program, yeah. that's here. I can't put trash out. That has a secure cover, but, right, and it holds the clear bags, but they won't accept that either because right. that's not a proper container. So I have six barrels of Casellas in my backyard, but you want a container from Walmart with a cheap cover that I got to drill through and rope it so when the driver comes by and throws the stuff out, the covers don't blow away. <clears throat> That's the response I got downstairs. I agree with you about the Bradley thing. I don't want my, the next house to me to look like a dump because I take care of my house. And so I agree with you on that point. You said a quarter of a mile. I'm sure it's a figure of speech. My mother's got a house in Sturbridge, probably within a half a mile of the landfill. We're, we live with the landfill. It's the way it is. It's not a regional landfill. It's the state landfill. I'm in the trucking business. Mm -hmm. It's called that. Okay. Everybody's trash comes to town. Okay. And right. we're known as the landfill town. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. I, I love Southbridge. I've been here all my life. It's a mill town. An old Yankee once told me, you can't take chopped beef and make a porterhouse with it. I agree it should be clean. This town should be clean. But a $250 fine slapped on my back, because I can walk away from that house, and you can tear that place down like the rest of them. But this is just a slap in my face. I, and my tenants, too. And so now I don't participate. You don't have to pick trash up at my house anymore. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, I'd like to also point out, too, a couple of things. When our recycling rates go up, um, the other ten those who use our landfill pay, if their rates are not um, equal or above ours, if I'm not mistaken here, then the tipping fees are more for our town. Um, so it behooves us to, to recycle more. We've made that statement numerous times. That's just a, a, case, a fact of point in terms of our recycling efforts here in our own community. I, I do think, uh, Madam Chair, that maybe the folks from uh, Casella could comment on the, um, the what efforts you guys do in terms of making sure that your drivers are not just playing frisbee with the lids and so on. Okay. Would that be if we could just wait for a sec then and have them answer that? Because he brought up the question. Okay. I, I thought. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. We um, speaking to them. I just. Uh, as far as the drivers go and the training of the helpers, uh, we do train our helpers to make sure, and we. They're not throwing the, the lids. I mean, we, we have many discussions with the Board of Health, and when people call in, whether a complaint or whether it was wind blown or something, um, we kind of came to a decision. The best way to handle not having the lid blow away would be to buy the attack the lid attached to the container, and then when the driver comes, whether he places it on top of it, it's already attached, and it's not going to blow away, and it's going to make it an easier situation. Um, out on the street. So that's the way we recommend. Um, we've talked about it a couple times. When somebody calls our office, we definitely recommend that buying the barrel that has the uh, cover or lid attached to it.
Right. I'm not sure if the people at home would hear that. The question um, from John was, why can't we use the recycling containers, which are earmarked for recycling, um, for that? Um, and I would also like to point out, if you have too many containers, because I know people that has happened, you take the containers back, correct? That's I mean, if they're correct. not utilizing all their containers, they can be returned. They can be picked up. So yes, we actually went out and uh, we put an auditor on one of our trucks to audit the number of toters at people's homes, and we took. Um, took notes on everybody's home who had a total, who didn't have a total. I don't know how that slipped by, maybe because behind the building. But the totals are strictly for recycling. That's what uh, we put them out there for, to help reduce, uh, help in, you know, increase the recycling material. That 96-gallon toter, um, you can accept everything in it, all, from all the plastics, bottles, cans, paper, cardboard, can go in that toter. That's what the total is, uh, is for. I like to I like to point out that I like to believe that 96 gallon toter is another trash receptacle at my house, but it's a trash receptacle for stuff that's separated. I can put this type of trash. I don't call it recycles. It's trash. This type of trash can go in that 96 gallon container, and in my small container can go the things that can't go in that 96 gallon container. Technically, it is a trash can. It's just you just need to be a little mindful of what goes in it. But anyway, that's just my perspective. Go ahead, sir. Uh, my name is Josh, and uh, <clears throat> I own a duplex on Canal Street. And I was, during this three-month period, I was not informed in any way. Unfortunately, can't do 100%, like you know. Um, second, what is cons a clear trash bag? I, this is, like, like I said, I have no information about this. Where do I get them? I mean, mm -hmm. I buy hefty, white, tall kitchen bags. It's pretty much the staple for, uh, for trash. So mm -hmm. I, I don't really know where to get clear trash bags. Right. Uh, and, and that is one of the things that, you know, while we, that is part of the bylaw, which is the bylaws are being reviewed. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that white trash bags are fine, but that's just my opinion, and I guess I'm well, breaking the law. Well, I believe it's, it's supposed to be we want to get it in the trash so they can, can see the recycle. Yeah, exactly. Right. We want to make so sure I everybody's doing that, their but part. where do I get them? Where do you get them? I've been told Big Y does have them. What do you know? And just just a couple. Are you the property owner on yes, Canal Street? Yes, I am. Okay, because I will check in terms of if you leave your name with the with the uh, young secretary. We'll, we will look in and see if, why that letter wasn't sent to you. So, number one, uh, we will look into I that. I appreciate it. And we have made the determination. Number one, no, no one has received a ticket for having a white bag or a, or a black bag. So the only thing we have enforced is really if there's trash bags on the street or not. So there's no tickets have been issued in regards to that. Secondly, staff has made the determination, and I heard staff take a call the other day, that if you have a white bag that is somewhat translucent, so we can see what's inside of it. What we're trying to do, the concept behind the bylaw, uh, quite frankly, is that if someone had car batteries in the trash bag and they want right. to hide it in a trash bag, you can't see it in a black bag. Right. So the concept behind having a translucent bag is to see if there's any basically prohibited items in it. But the, the staff at the, at the Board of Health has made the determination that translucent could be white as long as the, the the person on the back of the truck, the shaker, can see what's in the bag to make sure it's not prohibited items, right. then you're good. So you don't have to. In terms of clear plastic, I actually live in a neighboring community and I've had to do clear plastic for about four years. And in that four years, I mean, Walmart and some of the other places have it. And before we started this program, we actually went to each of the, um, what is it, the supermarkets and the, um, the hardware stores and ask them to please carry clear plastic. And I believe most of them have responded back to us that they will, so they, they are out there. They are okay. a little hard to find, but they are right, out there. Right. Um, and just uh, the random statement of my fine is, uh, like I said, I live on Canal Street, which, which is across the street is the big parking lot behind Fins and Tails. And, and I walk that parking lot because I live there, I try to keep it clean and I'm always picking up trash every week. But I filled up a 50, almost pretty close to the top, like a big 50 gallon leaf um, mm -hmm. contain, uh, just a bag. And that was the day that I got the fine, was when I went and cleaned up that whole parking lot. And had an extra bag. And then I got a $250 fine. So mm -hmm. no good deed goes unpunished, mm -hmm. but. I do. I, I think I, I, it's it's good. I like the recycling. I like everything about it. I like 
having a clean neighborhood. But um, did you come in and talk to the hearing officer? I not did yet. You? Okay. I hope it goes better than him. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> we appreciate the fact that you're here tonight, making us aware of your situation. Too. Yeah. We're we're yes. not it trying to It sounds like you be... did everything. I just I wasn't aware. I throw my one bag out every week, if not every other. Yeah. I never saw a tag. Honestly, I don't really check out my trash once I throw it out there. Yeah. The other thing, um, if you are in the in the neighborhood for cleaning up the parking lots or the side streets, because I know we belong to a group that does that too, and, and others do, the town hall actually has um, yellow bags that they allow us to use during those trash pickup times. If you're looking at doing your neighborhood type stuff, I would be sure that the uh, Board of Health Office would give you some of those yellow bags, and those okay. would not be subject to ticket because yeah. we would know that you are doing an effort to clean your community, your, right. your neighborhood. Yeah. So, and I do try and split that I mean, up obviously in it's the not recycling bin, but. I'm right. not sorting through all of it. Right, but if you're picking up the, <laughs> that and you let us know, I mean, and, yeah. and they can actually be, you know, um, combined. So I left, uh, you know, I three yellow bags or something, and, and then they would know, and you would not have okay. a problem with that. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for thank coming you. forward. Is that okay? Oh, check. Sorry, Mr. Sp uh, Councilor Spinelli, you had a comment? Or? Um, yeah. I have to sit up here and I have to admit that I was one of the individuals who wrote this bylaw 20 plus years ago since I served on the planning board for about 26 years. Um, I believe and I've made public that I believe that this bylaw is a very good bylaw. And the fine is a very, very stiff fine. And the intent of the fine, as has already been explained, was not to punish people. It's not punitive. We weren't trying to raise money for the town, put money in the town coffers. What we wanted to do was to make it so prohibitive that people would actually take this bylaw seriously and adhere to the bylaw. That was our intent of a seven group of people who very diligently worked on this for a while before we actually passed, wrote it, Passed, passed it on to the council and the council accepted it. So if there is a strong fine with it, the fine is really there to stimulate people to say, hey, look, um, we should be recycling. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, I'm not the greatest of recyclers, but my wife certainly is. And she's always on my case. That goes into recycling. You can't put that there. That goes into re Well, I'm starting to learn more and more. And you know, I'll be the first one to admit it, and I'm poking fun at myself, but I'm one of the people that wrote the bylaw, and my wife is the person who's educating me about what I should and should not be recycling, and I learn things. The whole intent was not to punish people. And we're not trying, the whole intent was not to punish people. The amount of the fine was simply there to say, hey, before it got to the point where people got a fine, the intent was to say, hey, look, you know, the town of Southbridge is serious about recycling. Maybe I better fall in line with this thing. That was the intent, and it still is. So I understand and I, I, I certainly would not want to get a ticket, and I would not want to get a fine and everything else. And I hope that the fines, if they come forward, that they can be educated in a, in a fair and equitable manner. But I just, I just want people to know what was the reasoning behind this so many years ago. And it was, was not enforced, and it needs to be done. It's a good thing for our town. This is a real wonderful town, and there's no reason why it can't look as good as what this town really is. And I, I, I wanted to express my opinion so that if people want to take my picture and put it on a dartboard, they can, or whatever it else. But okay. the intent was okay. an honest group of people. I know some people will probably do that, too. Okay, we'll roll it along now. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Spinelli. I, I really want to make sure, and I know Mr. Buxton, you're going to talk, and we're going to, we'll keep going here a little bit longer. I want to make sure that we hear from our police department 
in terms of the what this what fining means and what these 21D violations really mean and why it behooves you to speak to the hearing officer or somebody, um, the hearing officer, take that time and hopefully get it really. Uh, uh, relieved or relinquished or whatever we want to reduce at least because it's it is important it is a 21d violation and there are ramifications to that and uh, lieutenant woodson here can maybe explain that process because i think that for me is very important that the con citizens know because it's a it's a criminal thing so go ahead yes yours if, if you attend the hearing or, or request a hearing and you're not satisfied with the results and you're you're found responsible for the 250 dollars fine you would request the hearing at Dudley District Court. If you fail to show for the hearing, it, it's treated as a criminal hearing at that point, and it would go on your criminal record as failure to pay a town bylaw violation. So everything that's here in Southbridge that isn't rectified at the hearing at the local level will, in fact, go to the court, and then it becomes, it could get attached to your criminal history as failure to pay a town bylaw violation. So I don't know if anybody has any questions on how that process would work or, or well, Mr. Just, Clark. Just to, one, one of the reasons why we did the fine route was that our other option was to start off at Dudley Correct. District Court and to have it be criminal. So we intentionally picked the fine process because that was an opportunity to change behavior without having to go through the, the court system and without having to, to necessarily get a, a criminal offense uh, rendered. So the, the $250 fine, where it may be obviously viewed as steep, was an attempt to avoid having to have to go to court and have court-related costs. So it is a process that's been introduced in the state law. It's probably been in place for about 20 or 30 years, uh, I believe. Right. Uh, so it's, it's an opportunity to, to basically correct behavior before it becomes a, a serious legal matter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, uh, go ahead. And, and just one thing to elaborate on the fine, as Council Spinelli had said, it's the same thing in the Commonwealth with speeding violations. We have the steepest fines or in the top ten in the country. If you go to the Midwest or the western part of the country, speeding at $30 fines, $40 fines, 50 The reason why the fines are so high in our state is to prevent that type of behavior, save people's lives, stop people from speeding. And that's, I also agree with the fine that our community levies. It's, we've gone from 100 citations a week, we're down to probably 10. Our people, our personnel would go out on the streets on a Monday morning and they'd write 50 town bylaw violations. Now they're coming in with only five. So it's absolutely working and I support it. It's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Buxton, um, and we want to remind people too that shortly we'll start the sewer and water hearing. So, but I'm I'm hoping that uh, we can have some cooperation to give it a little bit more time so we get everybody's input on this. And um, again, what comes from here we can discuss at EHS. Uh, so. All right, um, I'm going to try to keep this quick. I've only been involved in recycling for 16 years, huh? um, so You're a good one. this new program, this new program is, I'll consider a, another uh, attempt for the town to take baby steps at, at getting involved in recycling. And, and one of the first baby steps you need to do is maybe review your, your cable access bulletins. Uh, there's two in particular. One of them states, property owners who fail to follow bulk pickup guidelines will receive a citation from the Southbridge Police Department. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the police officer will um, agree that the Southbridge Police Department does not give out citations on guidelines. They give out citations on laws and bylaws. So as far as a bulk pickup guideline, that needs to move itself into the bylaws. Um, another, another section, electronic waste is not accepted curbside, but it is accepted at hazardous waste pickup days. There is no such thing as a hazardous waste pickup day. And that should have been caught long before it ended up on our public scroll. Um, I'm sorry to say that over the 16 years, I've heard a lot of people confused about recycling. And it's because of the fact that we, we sometimes talk down recycling or, or confuse people with the terms of, well, the recycling bin is trash. It's just different trash. Those type of things confuse people. It, it frustrates them, and sooner or later, they're not complying with anything. I've been before this council many a times. Um, I pushed for a recycling committee. I ended up with a sustainability committee. Uh, I agree, the recycling is important. 
As far as Casella and their pickup people, they need to review Section 8H of the Landfill Extension Agreement. It's very clear on how an operator is to pick up the barrel, dump it into the vehicle, and place the barrel back in its location with its lid. That's very clear in Section 8 of the Landfill Agreement. Many counselors have commented, well, we don't like these trash barrels rolling all over the place. It's very easy to point it out in Section H and ask their haulers to okay. comply. We've reduced 100 tons of trash. What value is that brought back to the, the residents? Nothing. Every year, our taxes continue to go up. Okay. My suggestion to Casella, if you would like your public opinion to improve, try taking some of those funds that you call recycle reward and try putting them back in the residents' pockets and not spending them on green-brown contracts and more miscellaneous mailers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buxton. Come on up. Do you want to respond to, uh, or perhaps we could? The only thing that I wanted to respond to was on the hazardous waste pickup. It's not what, a pickup day. It's perhaps not a, that's right. it's, we have that at the <laughs> landfill four times, a year. four times four. Okay. No, it's just the, I don't know, the way you, the clarification on it was four times a year that it's at the landfill. And URA it does say hazardous pickup day, but it's four times a day at the land, four times a year at the landfill. So noted. Thank you for pointing it out. I don't think I ever paid attention to the ads in the paper either. So, okay. All right. Anything else on that? I trust you'll look at Section 8 and we'll hear from you probably. Thank you. Go ahead. Thanks. Hi. Um, Pam Scavera. Um, I live on Everett Street. And I'm all, all for recycling 100%. And I think it's great to encourage people to do that. Mm -hmm. I am, I am not convinced that the way that it's been done has really, it may show that there's some increase, but um, it's been at the expense of probably, you like it, and there's a couple other people here that like it. I don't know anybody else in town who's actually in favor of what the trash pickups have done. Um, on Everett Street, I have to say, since this has come into effect, I pick up much more trash in my yard than I ever have. There's just much more either thrown out or blowing around. It's not in bags anymore. It's just tossed. So I'm not so sure that we've gained on cleaning up the town in doing this. I also think that um, trash should maybe be picked up one day a week. Mm -hmm. That way the town is clean all at once. Mm -hmm. Um, that way you maybe wouldn't even need the trash buckets because right. it's gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. Right. Um, I put mine out at 7 o'clock in the morning. I usually have a Walmart bag of trash that's now in the bottom of the bag, bucket. Mm -hmm. So they have to take the bucket, dump it out, pick up the bag before they could just scoop and go. It's clean. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that the first time that I put my bucket out with my little Walmart bag of trash in there. I came home, it's down the street, full of dog poop. So, you know, mm. I wasn't thrilled, one, about having to track down the trash can, plus the lid that had been run over down the street, and now it's full of dog poop. So, it doesn't seem like we're gaining anything from my perspective to do this. I could go on and on. I'll just quickly say something about the uh, multifam and the fines. I know several people who own multifams. They don't live in town. Mm -hmm. And they have now gotten probably over $1,000 in fines from their tenants. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, they're saying they maybe we'll just let the buildings go again, like he had said. Why are they getting penalized for what they have no control over? And clearly we commented, just not to you talk, did. just clearly commenting that it needs to be very clear with the hearing officer and the police, whoever's enforcing, we need to try to figure out Absolutely. our way, whether they're marked containers, that the people who are violating are the people that are getting fined. And I will take Because every that. resident is responsible for themselves. And I will take that back to the landlords yeah. that I know. But yeah. anyways. I, I take, I hear you what you're saying. I okay. do. Appreciate thank it. you. Okay. Thank you. Come back up. <laughs> 
speaking for the nice lady that was sitting next to me. Okay. <clears throat> and you mentioned this earlier, that mm -hmm. tenants are responsible. So go after some of these tenants. Because mm -hmm. um, so many landlords, like the woman before me said, aren't in town. Mm -hmm. They're paying lots of taxes, and they, they may not have control over that. Right. It, you know, Get a knock on some we doors. know where they live. Right. Thank you. This was brought up at EHS originally when we talked about this. I pointed out in the bylaw that it, tenants take responsibility, and we need to work on that effort, obviously. Councillor Vindel, did you want to say something? Yes, I did. I, I wanted to say that I agree with the pre not the last speaker, the speaker before, that uh, we should have trash pickup once a week. We tried to do that a year ago, and they gave us a sob story. We're working on it now. There's a bunch of councillors right now that are working on it that we would like one day a week. Thank you. Thank you. Hang uh, on. And that continues to be discussed also, Mr. Vex, uh, Buxton, the uh, once a week uh, potential um, uh, recycling pickup. So we, they, we continue to talk about it. So it's, and it, it takes time. Go ahead, sir. Uh, my name's Leo Cutwet. <clears throat> oh, okay. I'm here for to talk for Mrs. Uh, Carson Cole from 427. <coughs> excuse me, from 427 Worcester Street, okay. on a, <coughs> a uh, citation for trash. Okay. Uh, let's see. On Sunday night, March 8, I go there. I go there every Sunday night to put this lady's trash out. She's had back problems and everything. She's in the house sitting in her recliner, looking out on Worcester Street every day. So I go and help her out in the mornings on trash and day and stuff. That Sunday night, March 8, I went over there around 9 o'clock at night. I put her two trash containers out from her garage like I always do. Mm -hmm. Her house is up on a bank, and she's got a four-foot retaining wall on a sidewalk. So I take the trash barrels out of the garage, put them on a the sidewalk up against the wall. The, the lawn's up here, and the porch is up there, and she sits right there, and she can see everything that goes on on Worcester Street and everything. Well, there's two guys that live upstairs, tenants. They work in Boston every day. They don't have the salvage excess television. They don't have no TV, no nothing. They use their computers to know, to find out what they want to know. So, uh, there's four containers in all. There's the recycling bin. There's two containers that Mrs. Cole has, and her tenant has a 25-gallon container on the porch. The, People upstairs, tenants, they have their trash, they put the trash in trash bags, the guy goes outside on the porch, he takes his cover off, he puts his trash in the bag. Monday night, mon uh, Sunday nights, he puts it out downstairs, the same, almost the same time as I'm there putting out Mrs. Cole's trash every night. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, this man don't even know what goes on in salvage. They, bo they both work in Boston. Mm -hmm. So that Sunday night, and for years and years, they've always, Always put the trash in containers, even before this bylaw went through. The trash has always been in containers over mm -hmm. there. When it was loose and then when it came with the bags, it's still in a container. It always has been. Okay. It has to be in a container because the guy is up on the second floor. He ain't going to walk him up and down the stairs on the second floor every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So anyways, on the Sunday night, March 8, like I said, we put the trash out. That morning, she got a citation from the police department or whoever it was that went over there. And for $250. Okay. And it says, failure to put trash in containers. That means, like, sounds like a lot of trash for anybody that hears this. Okay. Put, failure to put trash in containers. What happened, the guy upstairs on the second floor, he had one little trash bag, not even the size of a little gross bag that you get in the store. Mm -hmm. He put some stuff during the night over there, and his other, his other container was full downstairs. Mm -hmm. Without even knowing, in the morning, he goes down, he puts that little bag next to his container downstairs on the sidewalk. Well, whoever went down there 
to write up the, the citation, I mean, just plain common sense. I mean, I'm a dummy. I didn't finish sixth grade, but I got common sense. When you go in front of somebody's house to write a citation and you see four big containers set there on a sidewalk that are full, then you see one little trash bag on the side and you write the person up saying that they're in they failure to put trash in containers. There's something wrong with that picture, that's for sure. Okay. Well, that's what happened there. And when Miss Cole got her citation, when she got a citation, I went over there the next morning, the lady was crying like crazy. She says, what did I do? What did I do wrong? I, I said, let me see, what is this for? I said, that's for that trash thing. I says, okay. I, says I, I said, you didn't do nothing wrong. I'm the one that puts your trash out every right. Sunday. Now, you didn't do nothing wrong, Miss Cole. Mm -hmm. Does she own the house, sir? Pardon? Does she own that house? Just yes. Curious. Okay, just, yes. just clarifying that. Thank you. Yeah, I just do a, mm -hmm. do a trash work because she can't do it. Okay. So I said, well, let me go upstairs and talk to the tenant, see what happened. So I went upstairs, I knocked on the door, the guy answered the door, and I showed him the citation. I said, look at this, $250. I said, did you do anything you wasn't supposed to do? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, I put the two trash bags down the other, uh, two trash buckets out for Miss Cole last night. I saw you putting your container down. He said, no, he said, I didn't do anything. He said, well, I went to work in the morning, so I put one little bag there right next to my 25 gallon container, it was full. I said, well, look what it did to Miss Cole, a $250 fine. So, he said, I didn't even know, I'm so sorry. He said, she's not guilty. He says, Leo, he says, She's not guilty. She shouldn't be paying no $250 fine. I'm the one that made the mistake. Mm -hmm. okay. I did that, and I didn't know about the salvage bylaw, trash bylaw. Right. We don't know nothing about salvage. We work in Boston right. every day, the both of us. Okay. He says, if I have to pay the fine, then I'll have to pay it. He says, she's not responsible. I says, well, I find an appeal with the town hall for a hearing on this right. thing. Mm -hmm. So. I asked the guy, I said, what'd you do? He said, I only put that little trash bag. He said, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But another thing on a citation too that bothers me a lot. Mm -hmm. And number one, if these people, if, if everybody had notices on this thing, half of the stuff wouldn't be going on right now. Mm -hmm. And the lady downstairs wouldn't be loaded with complaints down there having hearings on this thing. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of the people don't know. Anyways, back to where I was. He, the guy said, if I have to, I'll go to court or wherever you want. Miss Cole is not to blame. I said, I know she's not to blame, but she, I says, it's nice to be able to give somebody a $250 fine for something that they didn't do. This lady don't even know what's going on. She's sitting in her house every day. She doesn't have to go through stuff like yeah. this. Not a so you're waiting years old. for your date on this? Is you're waiting for the date for the hearing officer at this point? Waiting for the, okay. for the, the, the letter to come in okay. to go for the appeal. Okay, and Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Woodson would like to speak to your, your comments. Just Mr. Collette, yeah? our department began to increase the enforcement, aggressively enforce this town bylaw in February, as you heard, through the town manager. Uh, we're, we're not perfect, our department's not perfect. We're trying to get our personnel to use more discretion if there's one bag. I know most of our people, 90% of our people, wouldn't issue a citation. They'd get out of their crews or go knock on the door and say, hey, you have one bag on the sidewalk. You could be cited. And so I'll look into that for the hearing yeah, for but, Mrs. Cole, because I agree with that. That's the perfect example of what well, should be brought to a hearing. And we want to work together. We don't want to penalize right. people. We don't get it. You know, we, we want to make this right. And we've been trying that for six months, but now you know, we need to obviously continue. It's not it, enough and we need to be mindful of that. So. If somebody goes by, an officer goes in front of a house and yeah. he sees four big containers on a sidewalk, right. Right. loaded up with whatever's in them, the trash and whatever, and he sees one little bag, you're gonna write that person up, you're, not, you're gonna tell me you don't think that person's abiding by the town trash bylaw? Right. Well, what are those containers doing on the sidewalk then? Point taken. Point so well why taken. find the person $250? And why don't they have notices going when something like this happens, where it happens a lot? Right. Why don't people get notices from whoever sends them out from over here? Right. You okay. are in trash yeah. violation. This is a warning. Mm -hmm. The next time you will be fined. Right. Okay. 
this is your first warning and your last warning. The next time you will be fined, 25, 50, whatever, but not $250. Okay. Well, anyways. All right, so we'll work on that with you. And, and what I would suggest from out of this too is that perhaps we get together whoever's issuing the actual tickets, whoever is enforcing the hearing officer, and that uh, perhaps we need a staff would not be the quite uh, the right word perhaps but maybe that's what you call it staff meeting of some sort to really make sure mm. I would like to sit down on that it's your staff it's not our council staff it's it's you oversee these people and I I know probably other counselors would like to sit in on something like that to make sure that we that everybody is on the same page I'm sorry I, I do feel that I don't think people are on the same page with this and I realize mm. you're you're giving directives mr. Clark but we're certainly not on the same page sometimes when it comes to um, the results of those directives. So I want to make sure that we know that it, we, we feel good as a council that we, we're making rules. We're setting, we're taking votes for you, the community. We're, we're trying to do the right thing. We want to make sure that those who are, in, are given that task to do that do the right thing. You say we gave you a task. Well, now we have to make sure that it, it is being, you know, uh, done for the citizens because that's what we're about. We're supposed to be representing the citizens, and we hear you. We hear everybody that's been speaking tonight. So um, I, I take it I take it seriously. And, and Mr. Woodson, we'll look into your particular issue. We got notes on some of the other issues too, so I hope that's. And you're very. She's very lucky to have you to put her trash out every month, every week, because that's. You're can, a good guy. You're one of the good ones. We don't want to hurt you. <laughs> can I keep on with this? Pardon me. Can I keep on with this? Well, we do have a water and sewer hearing. Is there anything okay. else that we can it do for it you? It won't take too long. But okay. if you people sent notices on the first violation, you wouldn't be going through all this stuff, and that lady downstairs wouldn't be loaded with appeals down there. Right. Plain common sense. Like I said, I'm a dummy. I didn't finish this grade. Just common sense. You don't have to be too smart to figure this out. Okay. You, know? <laughs> you don't have to be too smart to figure this out. No. Well, that's why I want to make sure we're on the same page, sir. You know, that's... Not only that, but by the first citation being a complaint, now the landlord that lives in Springfield that owns property in Salvage over here, when he gets that citation notice, now he can call his tenant up in Salvage and tell them, you know, you guys, I only come pick up my rent once a week, or once a month down here. What's going on down there? You guys are not doing what you're supposed to do? Well, okay, I just got a warning from the town of Salbridge. If you guys don't comply with the trash law down there, by law, they're going to find me. And if they find me, your rent's going up or you're going to have to pay the fine. This is your warning from me because I'm not going to pay your fine for you. At least the landlord would know what's going on if you people sent him a notice instead of just finding somebody $250 the first time, and a lot of people don't even know what's going on. That ain't right doing that. Okay. That's not right doing that. Yeah. And another thing, too, that same day that Ms. Cole was written up, I, go back, I went back there at 10.30 in the morning to Kessel had already, they already gone by, heading from Charm down towards town. They had already gone down. The trash barrels were all empty on that side of the street. Mm -hmm. It was very windy on the night, March night, that mm -hmm. day. There were trash barrels all over the place. The man across the street has got a 25-gallon container with four little plastic bags. He gets meals on wheels and stuff. It comes in styrofoam cups. The stuff's in there. It's in the four little bags in the container. You got the 18 wheelers coming down Worcester Street, like 40 miles an hour, creating an 80 mile an hour windstorm over there on both sides of the road, sucking those containers right out in the street. What it did to this man, his cover come off, he never found his cover. He had one little trash bag, he had four bags in this container. The container's laying on his side, right next to the side of the line, which is about four feet away from his lawn. And he had one container left. There was two there was two trash bags in the road, one in a container, and one now one was across the street on Mrs. Cole's sidewalk again, right next to her empty bin, the container that salvage that Kessler had already emptied out. Now if the officer were in by again, what would have happened? She were gonna find for another two hundred and fifty dollar fine for that one bag that blew over on a sidewalk from the wind. I bet there's a lot of that going on too. I, there's a lot of stuff here that's very there's a lot of I ain't got nothing against the recycling. I think it's a great thing, but there's a lot of flaws there. There's a lot of things that have to be straightened out. 
But we appreciate your comments, and we need to keep moving because we did say that there's a water sewer hearing that was supposed to start at 7. So we're going to look into your issue. We're going to talk some more about this and, and bring it down to the subcommittee and hopefully come up with some better answers to the community and, and be more as accountable as we can. So we appreciate you coming down and taking the time tonight, though. It means a lot to the community to hear what you have to say. Thank you. But it's, uh, so there was warnings that make it lots easier for everybody. You people will not have to, there would be a lot, it would be better for everybody all the way around if people were warned the first time. Okay. Um, any final comments in terms of your pickup? Um, I must say I occasionally see from my own uh, your people picking up things they shouldn't be picking up, and that bothers me. I say that publicly. Um, because they're supposed to be helping in this effort too. So if there's a large box full of trash, maybe that should be getting a warning or a sticker and not just being thrown in because they're on their route. So that's something I observe and that bothers me just from that perspective. So And I can I can review that again with the drivers and the helpers. We we are tagging when necessary. Okay. And they are calling it in and we are communicating with the Board of Health. Great. That's almost on a daily basis. My personal notice. Yeah, that I've seen <laughs> happen a couple of times. So I just uh, want to make sure that they're mindful too that it, it's their effort to work in the community with us. Yep. And, so Comments? Anybody else that uh, want to bring anything up? All right. Oh. Okay, one more thing. How fast can you be? Okay. No, what do you want to say? We'll repeat it. Okay. Unable to get the, on the ticket, it says unable to get the signature of the offender, but they probably didn't walk up and knock on the door. Okay. Okay. Point to you, Mr. Perry. You can't get the you can't get the signature if you don't get out of the car and actually do your job. I get it. Right. On the ticket. Right. Okay. Point taken. All right. Well, you've got the guy here who's who's going to make sure that we'll take care of it, Mr. Cowan. Okay. All right. Um, and before we can, uh, I want to thank everybody for giving us your time this evening. I, we probably didn't answer all the questions, and I'm sure we didn't come up with all the resolutions. But we're more we're more aware now of, of the concerns and what's going on. And I and I hope we can um, do justice to you, to the citizens and and get these concerns um, figured out a little bit better. I would like to take just a second here to a uh, little public announcement. I apologize, but uh, we were approached by the uh, Quinnebog Valley Cultural Center about a program that's happening this Sunday. And since they were not able to get it at a town meeting on Monday, I did tell them that I would pass this along to the community since we are live. And that is that um, on uh, Sunday, they are starting a, um, there is an opening reception for Terra 25. It's the second annual high school student recycled art exhibit. So this is a really good time to mention this. In addition to the exhibit and the opening, there's a, it's a celebration of Earth Day. There's a presentation at 1 p.m. by Deb Maluin on monarch butterflies, hummingbirds, bees, and other pollinators of the region. In recent years, the environmental changes, pesticide use, and technological developments have altered the sustainability of our ecosystems. Deb will discuss these effects and describe her passion for raising monarch butterflies, an art passed down from her mother that she now shares with her children. They're inviting the public to attend these events, which are both free and open, um, Sunday, April 22nd, from noon to 3 p.m. And the exhibit of all that wonderful recycled art will remain through May 13th at the Art Center right here, 111 Main Street in Southbridge. Um, so we ask that you uh, Go down and check that out. And I also want to do a plug for Saturday, April 21st, Operation Tree Party is taking effect um, here through the efforts of many. And uh, on Saturday, April 21st, 8 o'clock, we're looking for more volunteers to show up at the Kennedy Donovan Center, which is on Worcester Street across from the Knights of Columbus Hall. Um, they are going to be bringing 80 or 90 trees that will be planted on, on the affected homes from the tornado. And they are certainly looking for you. If you've got some time to share one way or the other, show, show up um, on Saturday morning. Bring some gloves if you've got them, a shovel, and see what they can do um, with your energy. Put you to work and help uh, for a good cause for our community. So um, I do apologize, but I thought those were very important to get out to the public. And. I believe that uh, concludes this portion, and we're going to take a five-minute recess, if that's okay, and then we're going to come back with the water and sewer rate hearing that will be run by our town manager. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming this evening. We really appreciate your input. <laughs>